Hi everyone, I'm back and let's begin. This is the paper and I thought I'll start with question number five and then do one and two because five is mass spec and I want to do more mass spec. Okay. Hmm. All good. Hi, Marwa. How are you? Good to see you here. Guys, I had to ask you, can you guys hear me? Hi. Yes, yeah, so I had a couple of questions to ask. And I asked my second years that, so I thought I'll ask you guys also, you know. This is some feedback questions we're asking, if that's okay with you guys. Can you do that, Abhi, quickly? Hmm? Okay, so those of you who are here right now, I'm just wondering, I know some of you I've seen around earlier, even for the live sessions, pehle, and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. And so was I was wondering if there's anything, I mean, I don't know who's been using the platform for more than a month or so, but those who have, or even others who have just joined in them also, I want to directly ask you if there are any suggestions you can think of to give us that would better help or serve students, you guys, and next year others better, you know? Any, maybe a problem that is still not solved maybe for you guys in terms of what you're still facing difficulty and that you think can be solved by somebody else, you know, and be open to sharing. It's okay. It's just ideas for us to ask what, what is something we haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Academically. Otherwise, as a as an academic place, what are the areas you might be thinking of? Anything that comes to mind. I know Marwa is answering, but I think I'm just thinking also with everybody else who's also here. There are about eight, nine, ten of you who are live right now. More see the recordings, I know, so they don't get to answer these. But for those of you who are live here, I just was asking you guys this. Hmm? Hmm. Okay, so there are no pro if there are no problems using all, then maybe... You know, what more could be possible? Maybe make the top bar of the website less complicated. Okay. That's one. Thank you. That's one. Okay. Uh, meaning you have less stuff there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. That's one thing. I think we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like courses and home and that's probably it maybe, right? Can we get a dark theme? Hmm, well, for the courses, probably we could, you know. I don't know if the community yet has dark themed available. The software we use probably doesn't have that, but I think in the in the questions you can in the side the course page. Hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. Others. I know others are online. Uh, people have no voice. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to talk. I don't know. Okay. Thanks, Marwa. Awesome. That's great to know. And right now, wait, which city are you guys all connected from right now? Those are online. Just curious, which city are you guys right now in today as we speak right now? You know, just for curiosity again. Marwa is in, Marwa, you're in Beijing. What? What? What time is it in Beijing right now? Is it like 1 a.m., 2 a.m.? One thirty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Hmm. I don't know. We had reached all the way to Beijing. Are your friends from uh, Pakistan or from? Are you from? Uh, I don't know. You shifted from Lahore. Okay. 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 You shifted to Shekhapura. Yes, I know Shekhapura, Muhammad Ahmed, Lahore, Sialkot. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. We got Shekhapura. Yep. We got Lahore. We got Lahore. We got Sialkot. We got Beijing. We got Morocco. We got uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, we have 41 kids. For, we have we have students from 41 countries right now in all academy. So that's fun, you know. Lesotho, places like that, you know, Malaysia, uh, definitely Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, America. You know, strange places people buy from. And now I found the Chinese one also. Now. Marwa is the Chinese one. Okay. All right, guys. Let's begin. It is really cool, man. It is so cool. It is academy really, like Tanzania. Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa. I was like, what? So, you know, that melting pot is coming together nicely. I like it. You know, it's been nice. All right, let's begin. Uh -huh. No, none for Mexico yet. No, sorry. No, not for Mexico yet. Mexico, no, no, Mexico. And no, maybe Germany and no France, obviously. Many non-English speaking countries are not on the list. You know, countries that were, see, countries that were colonized or English speaking are the really ones that are using Cambridge, you know. Countries which are not colonized, Mexico is never colonized, I think. Or was it? I don't know. But not about the British, right? So colonized by the British or are an English speaking country, you know, the only those ones. Maybe China is not, but I don't know. Anyways, let's let's, let's get the show on the road. Let's start, okay? Mm -hmm. So here, it's this reaction is about butene reacts with KMnO4 to form organic compound Y. Okay, now butene with uh, KMnO4 can does uh, can react with butene two ways, right? Now, uh, it's saying uh, now. So if you remember, you know butene. This is butene. Now, this can react with KMnO4 one of two ways. Either the double bond is ruptured and you end up making a two carbon acid. Or if it's cold dilute KMnO4, then you end up making a diol. You know, so there are one of two products that can form. So either it's a diol or ethanoic acid. Now, why did I make only one product for the, uh, for the concentrated reaction? Because it breaks, the two sides are symmetrical, they make the same acid. What they're saying is, Y does not react with sodium carbonate. That means Y is not a carboxylic acid. That's the one thing that you first realize. The Y is not a carboxylic acid. But a gas is produced when sodium reacts with Y. So it's not an acid, but reacts with sodium tells me that it must be an, must have OH groups or hydroxyl groups, which confirms the fact that it's going to make a diol. Yeah. So far, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So now what are the conditions for the other guy? What are the conditions? What are the conditions? Cold, dilute, and what? It has to be a, you know, so either acidic or alkaline, right? Right? So the it is basically cold, dilute, alkaline, KMNO4. That's what you need. Or cold, dilute, acidic. But you need it to be acidic or alkaline. That's the one thing, okay? Then it says 24 cm cube of gas is produced when an excess of sodium is added to a certain moles of Y. Now, assume that one mole of gas occupies 24 dm cube. So you gotta figure out how many moles of gas is this? And which gas is this? This is hydrogen, by the way. Because that's the gas produced when sodium reacts. Now, one thing you gotta remember is that if you have one alcohol group, then sodium makes a salt for any for every one alcohol group sodium makes an alkoxide and half a mole of a gas 
So the ratio of sodium to gas is literally 1 is to half or 2 is to 1 or the ratio of every uh, OH group is 1 is to half. So if you have two OH groups, then it will be 2 is to 1. So first you find the number of moles of gas. That's 24 over 24,000 cm cube because 24 dm cube is in cm cube 24,000. So now when you do this, I believe this is 0 0.001, right? So 24 divided by 24,000 is 0 0.001 or 1 times 10 power minus 3 moles. Okay, so therefore, if I think about Y is to, you know, so now they want the working, right? So basically all this working I'll do here, okay? So what I'll do is I'll find the moles of hydrogen right there, you know, I don't need, yeah, right there. And then I do the math, okay, okay. so basically Y is to hydrogen. 0 0.001 is to 1 times 10 power minus 3, which is by the way the same thing. So the ratio is 1 is to 1. So therefore, you need to know that, but the ratio of each OH group to hydrogen is supposed to be 1 is to half or 2 is to 1. Therefore, Y has two OH groups. Because if Y had one OH group, then the ratio of y to h2 would be 1 is to half, not 1 is to 1. So you're producing twice as many hyd uh, hydrogen gas, which means that y must have two OHs. Okay? And therefore, the possible structure of y would be, um, remember it was what? So 1, 2, 3, 4, I can make skeletal or I can make structural. CH3, CH, OH, CH, OH, CH3. Butan 1, 2 diol. That's where this comes from. And having done that, then the next part is Z contains three atoms of carbon and hydrogen and a halogen. The mass spectrum of Z is recorded. So it's a carbon, hydrogen, and a halogen guy. And it says the section of mass spectrum at MR is greater than. So figure. This is only shown greater than 63, okay? That's important. The fragment at 64 is the molecular ion. That's very interesting. So if 64 is M, 65 is what we call the M plus one peak, and 66 is the M plus two peak. And understand the reasons why we have the, the, the significance of the M plus one peak and the M plus two peak. The M plus 2 peak will tell me the identity of the halogen, of the halogen. Is it chlorine or bromine? Now, why does that matter? Because if it's chlorine, you know, chlorine has, if the compound had chlorine, then the M and M plus 2 ratio should be 3 is to 1. And if it's bromine, then the M and M plus 2 ratio should be equal one is to one and i look at the m and the m plus two ratio see 100 is to 33 what does that look like to you a three is to one ratio or a one is to one ratio i think you could figure out that it's a three is to one ratio so therefore if the m to m plus two is a three is to one ratio therefore the halogen is chlorine and you might have to explain that somewhere that's one then the second is deducing the number of carbon atoms that you get from m plus one ratio so here for the number of carbon atoms you need to know that the ratio of carb um, m into m uh, the m peaks to m plus one peak is that the ratio is a hundred is to 1.1 n you have to learn this where n is the number of carbon atoms That's the abundance or the peak ratio. So what is their abundance? If I look at it, well, actually 60, the, the M peak is 100 height, but the M plus 1 is a 2.2 height. So when I cross multiply, I mean, it's pretty easy, right? It's all equal. So basically, 
2.2 is 1.1 n so n is 2 so n is 2 and you can show this working that we just done you know you know there here that's fine or above anywhere show your working that's what you have or you can say the m is 2m plus 1 is supposed to be 100 is to 1.1 n so 1.1 n is 2.2 n is 2 whatever way you do okay but you have to know this guys that the m to m plus 1 is always going to be 100 is to 1.1 if they don't give you 100 or something whatever they give you it should be 100 is to 1.1 and the m and m plus 2 for bromine is a 1 is to 1 ratio and for chlorine is a 1 is to 3 ratio so now there are multiple things happening the molecular fragment fragment is 64 so what have you just figured out basically sorry let me scroll up so you already figured out the halogen is chlorine you can you can say as the m to m plus 2 ratio is 3 is to 1 okay then they have 29 and 49 before that you already know the compound is C2, something H, and chlorine. Okay? And the MR for the lowest masses is 64. And if you remember, so far I can even figure out how many H's do I have, you see? Because I already have this. I would rather get these, uh, the formula of Z first, the molecular formula at least, right? So the lowest mass... For chlorine, you use 35. The M peak it has chlorine in the mass of 35. So 64 minus 35 leaves me 29. 29 is the rest of the guy. So I already figured out what 29 is, the rest of the guy. And what is the rest of the guy? Well, we already have two carbons in it. So that's 12 times 2 is 24. So how many hydrogens? Five. So I already figured out what my Z is, right? It's C2H5Cl. But if you make it, you draw it out, there's only one option. This is C. Z is CH3, CH2, Cl. Or you call it chloroethane. Yeah. Then, so what is 69? Sorry, 29. 29 is C2H5 plus. All mass over charge in the thing is a plus ion. And if you figure out a C2H5Cl and the whole molar mass is 64 when chlorine is the lowest, is 35. Then if you look at like this, this group is 15, this group is 14, and that's 35. So 15 and 14 makes 29. How do I get 49? Well, 14 and 35 makes 49. So then I'll just do trial and error. So what's 49? 14 plus 35. So that's ch2 cl plus is 49 and the oral structure is this fellow that's how you figure this one out yep all right okay then so far all right now i i'm taking requests or i'll do question number one If you have requests, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll do question number one. Okay, I can do the fourth one. Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, mujhe to Muhammad Ahmed kuch nahi mushkil lagta yar. मैं क्या करूं? Especially A ones का सारा A ones में तो कोई चीज tricky भी नहीं लगती। अपुन क्या करे, boss? अपुन है ना? वो भी नहीं लगता ना ज़्यादा। कोई ऐसी बड़ी बात नहीं है। Okay. Hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Ankeda. Ankeda. Okay. Yes, we can do organic Miran. But so I am I am the goat, I agree. Nope. But what do I do with that information? That doesn't help me solve uh, which question to do next. Somebody said question number four, organic. Somebody said fourth one. Okay, so there were two for organic, so I'll do that, right? Is organic the trick? Do you guys all want to do organic first? Is that is that the case? You find organic, the one to solve for? See what one, I forgot to have my coffee and I made it and I forgot to have it. Okay, so let's start this question. What do you say? Now this question is about two methyl propene reacting with HCl. Now directly we don't do an HCl reaction with propene because we study uh, HBr reacting with an alkene because this guy is an alkene, right? So the major product is 2-chloro-2-methylpropane, which means it's an addition product. So I'm assuming, okay, so HCl must react with HBr just through electrophilic addition. And your job is to figure the same method out for HCl as you did for HBr. That's literally the case. Yeah. And how do you do it for HBr, if you remember? Uh, now, this was not very well answered by the students. First of all, maybe the CL threw them off, but honestly speaking, it shouldn't. You gotta work the CL like you work the HBR. And the way this works is, first, you know, this is where people lose marks. The first curly arrow must start from the middle of the alkene, double bond, to the H. And the second arrow should start from the middle of the HCl and go to CL. That's the sequence. That's the first step. From the middle of the double bond to the H, and from the middle of the HCL to the CL. That's what has to be. Okay? On the other hand, okay, we have, then you got to make the intermediate, right? So they want the major product. So major product means the more uh, stable intermediate. So the H can either go on the carbon on the right, and when it does, the carbon on the left, the double bond becomes a tertiary carbocation. Or the H can go on the carbon on the left, and the carbon on the right becomes a primary carbocation. Since I'm on the major product between a primary and a tertiary carbocation, we prefer primary. So H will bond to the carbon on the right. So basically, the left one, go. Car, this is the left carbon in the double bond. And now the right carbon in the double bond is in the pink, right? And I'm saying that is the one that bonds to the new H. And the left carbon in the double bond gets a plus charge. And to that, the Cl now that you had here gets at least one lone pair and a negative charge. And then this lone pair is what gets transferred to this plus charge. So now the lone pair attacks the carbocation through another curly arrow. And that's the curly arrow to go here. And that's what forms. Now you have this carbon that was green, has a CH3 on the left, on top, and also on the right. Hence the carbon has three CH3s and a Cl. They've just rotated the molecule a little bit, but it's the same thing, okay? So there's a curly arrow from here, one mark, curly arrow from here, intermediate dipoles. The intermediate has a plus charge, the chlorine has a negative charge, and has a lone pair. You have to show a lone pair on chlorine that came from here. The chloride ion actually has four lone pairs. You don't have to show all four, just the one that came from here. Okay. And that's this. This is the electrophilic addition mechanism. Yep. And then it's saying is why 2-chloromethylpropane is made? Because uh, this, uh, you could say 2-chloro-2-methylpropane is made via a tertiary carbo 
cation. Okay, that's the first part. Why, why is that important? That's the intermediate, right? Which is, is a more, which is a relatively more stable intermediate. You know, why is it more stable? Now explain why is it more stable. As its uh, electron density or charge density is reduced by the three alkyl groups which are what? Electron releasing. So what they're looking for is then you knowing that alkyl groups are electron releasing. So you can even give it in the other order. You can say, well, this guy's wire tertiary carbocation. It has three alkyl groups. Electron, they're all electron donating. They lower the charge density, make the cation more stable. You can also reverse the order. But this is the same thing they keep asking why the tertiary carbocation is more stable. And you need to know that. You need to have that with you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can I move on to the next thing? <clears throat> Remember, please link the probability to the intermediate being more stable, not the product being more stable. The products for those both two are equally stable. It's just that the major product has a more stable intermediate. So you got to keep that in mind. Okay. Some people quote that the product is more stable. The product is the same. Okay. Now it has two bottles labeled Q and M are each containing a straight chain haloalkane. With X could be Cl, Br or I. Okay. A sample in each case is added to aqueous silver nitrate. The aqueous part of the silver nitrate causes the halide to be reduced, to, to be removed and a precipitate is made. And the precipitate is AgX. The Q will make a different precipitate and M will make a different precipitate, right? So the organic, oh, the same organic product, but a precipitate. So the organic product is C4H9OH, by the way, where the X is replaced by an OH. And Q makes a white precipitate. Therefore, you know Q made silver chloride. The yellow is silver iodide. That means Q is C4H9Cl and M is C4H9I. Chlorobutane, iodobutane, or whatever chain it is. I don't know if it's a, oh, they're saying it's a straight chain. Okay. So it's a butane, but we don't know which position it is. Could be one chloro, two chloro, three chlorobutane. Okay. So first of all, identify the functional group in T. T is an alcohol, right? So the functional group for I alcohols now they prefer instead of calling alcohols, calling them hydroxyl functional group or hydroxy functional group. Both mean the same thing. Hydroxy or hydroxyl. They're both alcohols. Absolutely. Okay. And I'm sure if you wrote alcohol, it would also be right. Okay. You can write, so write the word alcohol. That would be perfectly correct. But now they're, they're enticing people to use hydroxyl more than that. Eventually, they will only want the word hydroxyl. Then the type of reaction, okay? The type of reaction that first makes the alcohol is nucleophilic substitution. Now you can just write the word substitution also, substitution. But I would prefer, nucle I prefer nucleophilic substitution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, I don't know, people thought at times that maybe it's making an acid. But remember one thing, guys, the the silver nitrate is the secondary part. The first part is with the water. And if you're wondering why that is, think of this. One, two, three, four, and Cl plus water also undergoes hydrolysis. So it makes alcohol and HCl. It's just slower than the hydrolysis using NaOH. So it's the same reaction. I need to find some space. Let me find some space right here. So basically, 
uh, right here. Mm -hmm. So any alcohol, let's take methanol. Now, uh, sorry, uh, let's take a haloalkane like chloromethane. Now with hydroxide ions through NaOH aqueous, you to, you've taught this. Because this is a very high yield. This is called hydrolysis, which is a type of nucleophilic substitution. You use NaOH aqueous to do that. That's because it's a catalyst and heat under reflux. That makes it really fast. But the same reaction, if somebody else does it, can also happen through water. You know, the same exact reaction. Let's say H2O in blue. Come on, I chose blue. Why not H2O in blue? Same reaction. The Cl gets replaced by an OH. Now, the OH can come from any OH or from water. The water's NaOH is actually, uh, the, the water's OH is much a slower reaction. So this is extremely slow. So when you are asked to how to make an alcohol from haloalkane, you do the first reaction. You don't do number one, two, you do number one. So when you, when you are asked to make an alcohol from a haloalkane, you are learned just at NaOH aqueous and heat under reflux. Yes, because that makes it. That's the best condition. But when they give silver nitrate, they give it because it's aqueous. It's aqueous means it has water. Water means what? This is a test for the identity of the halogen, by the way. You take a haloalkane, you add any aqueous compound. It'll react. It'll just be very, very slow, but it will react. And that's why they do this. All right. I hope that answers the question. I'm going to continue down now. <coughs> Sorry guys, just coughing. Ah, oh. okay. Sorry guys, let me continue. My bad. Okay. Then I scroll down. Then they say construct an equation for the reaction to describe the formation of the yellow precipitate when M. So the yellow precipitate is the iodide. So simply speaking, you want an ionic equation. That's when silver aqueous ions react with iodide aqueous ions to make silver iodide. Now you might wonder, where did I get these iodide ions? We got them from the previous example I gave you, where you had C4H9I first react with the water of the silver nitrate to become the alcohol whose structure we do not know but give off the iodide ions then the iodide ions react with the silver ions to make silver iodide solid that's what you write the nitrate ions are spectator ions now then saying describe which reagent q or m will precipitate a, will produce a precipitate more quickly see now the precipitate the quickly precipitate has got nothing to do with the precipitation. It's got to do with which will release the halide ion more quickly. Which meaning halide ion in this reaction that we just saw. This one. So let me write the chloride one also. So what they're saying is compare the high speed of hydrolysis of chloroalkane and iodoalkane. The reaction that produces the halide faster, which one is faster? So let me ask you, think about this. Think about yourselves. Is reaction number three faster or four faster? And whichever reaction is faster will produce the halide, which will then react with silver ions to form the precipitate. So which will react faster? Basically, reaction number four will be faster. And absolutely, if you're thinking, it's four is faster. Yes, it is. And why is it faster? Because uh, iodoalkane bond is weaker than the chloroalkane bond. And that's the crux of it. And that's what you write. So which reagent will produce the precipitate more quickly? The one that is iodo. Which is iodo? The yellow PPT. Therefore, the answer is M. So here, 
you would say the reagent is M and you literally write that, that as the Ci bond is what? Is weaker than what? The CCl bond. You got to write that, you know. Therefore, it produces the halide faster. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Haya, the first part of your quest statement is absolutely correct, but it's rude to just write that and not share with people who are wondering what you asked. So I'm going to do that for you because it's not nice. So yeah, you said, why isn't Cl more electronegative? Yes, Cl is more electronegative. But what does electronegativity have to ever do with bond strength? Who ever told you ever that bond strength has got to do with electronegativity? Do you know the meaning of the word electronegativity? Because you're quoting the right data. It's like I say, you're a girl. That's why the reaction is faster. It must be correct that you're a girl. But it's got nothing to do with the rate of the reaction. The rate of the reaction only determines on bond strength. And there's only one factor that determines how strong a bond is. First of all, obviously, if they're more than single bond, but there were single bonds. Can anybody tell me what is the one factor of an atom that determines how strong a bond they make? Just the factor of an atom. What is the one property of an atom that determines how strong the bond they make? Exactly, Haya. You're answering the whole question yourself. Marwa, that's deductive. Yeah, so Marwa said bond length. Yes, but bond length is determined by which I mentioned very clearly. I asked which property of an atom, the size of the atom. No, Shahzeb, the charge density will play. The, char the charge density tells me that the guy is charged. So can you tell me uh, which particle, what, what kind of bonding are charged particles involved in? Ionic bonding. We're talking about covalent bonding right now because bond strength or a dash is not for ionic bonding. It's for only covalent bonding. So in the moment I asked co bonding, bond strength, you say covalent and covalent bond depends on size. So here, they're not asking this, but if you were to, if I was to ask you or you were to ask it, okay, so why is the CI bond weaker than CCL? Because why is CL stronger? Because CL is smaller. And when you are smaller as an atom, what you do is you have greater orbital overlap. And where, where does orbital overlap come into play? Well, orbital overlap comes into play in making covalent bonds. Smaller guys, greater orbital overlap, therefore they're stronger. Iodine, larger atom, not as good overlap, Weaker bond. That's it. All right. Okay. Then it says here when pure T is added to alkaline iodine. Hey, that reminds me. Alkaline iodine is like what? Is like the iodoform test, right? So this is the iodoform test, and the iodoform test checks for a methyl alcohol or a methyl ketone of sorts. But we know it's an alcohol, so therefore we must be looking for a methyl alcohol. And it says here it produces the yellow precipitate. Oh, brilliant. And an anion is made. So, okay. So what's the anion? Now the anion, they, it's like, you see, therefore, I mean, I'd rather first figure out M and then make the anion, right? So what's T? So let's figure out T first. I think let's figure out T, then the L, then the ion. So you need to know T first. So T would be what? And I will use some more space at the bottom. I'll make T right here. So T must have CH3, CH2, then COH like this. Had to have a two all. And now I made the two all from the right. And the yellow precipitated CHI3. That's not the anion. They're saying a yellow precipitate and an anion is made. 
people are assuming that the yellow precipitate is the anode. The yellow precipitate is, see if they had asked for it, it was CHI3. That's not the anion. The anion is the guy left behind. So that this guy becomes CHI3 and the remaining molecule is gets oxidized. So the last carbon, when it breaks up, is like a primary alcohol that gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid. But because the solution is alkaline, the acid, which is CWOH, becomes what? The salt. And the salt of the anion is this. So this is the anion. So the anion is CH3, CH2, COO minus. That's the anion. Okay. And the N is this, and therefore what is M? M had what halogen? Uh, M had the iodine, right? So just make this guy with the OH, instead of the OH, you put the I. So the initial molecule must be CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, and instead of the OH, you have I. You know, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. A different color, yeah. Or I would just make the skeletal. It makes life so easy, right? Or CH3, CH2, CH, I, CH3. That's the answer. Either of the three versions you can draw. All right? And that's the end of this beautiful question. Yeah? All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what next? Which question next? Choose. You have the paper with you, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Ethanol does. Muhammad Ahmed, ethanol does. It's... Yeah. Okay. Then, what question next, guys? Come on, pick a question. Organic? Mm -hmm. This is actually, this question has organic, equilibria, catalysts, and functional groups. I think we could do this question. It has organic, bonding, bond energy, KC, activation energy and then some organic and it's a nice question it's 16 marks let's do this Aya, did you answer no for me or Muhammad Ahmad because when I said let's do organic you said no but then you chose three so I don't know you know there's Andrew Tate here oh my god hi Andrew you're you're uh, not paroled and you're giving an exam at this age? Oh my God. Okay then. Yeah. We got I, Andrew Tate and we got, uh, yeah. We got, uh, definitely we got a guy who he wants to be somebody else. He's not happy with his name. You know, he wants to be somebody else. Anyways, I just had my last sip of cold coffee. I don't know why I was cold. I was having it here and shit. Ugh. I was so cold. But it's not ice cold, so yeah. Yes, I know. But I'll I mean, what do I roast him with? I don't know who the person is. I roast real people, not celebrities. You know? He's not here right now. I don't know who he is. Anyways. <coughs> Now this seems to be a fun question. It probably thrown a few people off because this question is first of all of a group of compounds called ethers, which you don't study in the syllabus. That's great. But they've given the structure to you. And if you notice, each carbon has single bonds right here. 
and they're saying when G is heated, it decomposes to make ethane, CO, and CH4. And it's net exo. Okay, that's what I'm reading from the question. They're saying the atoms in a molecule of CO are held by a triple covalent bond. Yay, one of them is dative. So draw a draught and cross diagram to show the arrangement of the outer electrons of CO. I can do that. So we make a circle for C and a circle for O. And then let's put them in there. So you got C and we got O. Well, one is a dot cross for carbon and oxygen. So let's say they're saying use a dot and cross for carbon. So I know that carbon only shares two of its electrons and two are unshared. Oxygen has six and oxygen shares four of its. So here, if I zoom in, maybe you can see, that's what I've done right here. That I've made uh, two regular covalent uh, bonds for the double bond and the third bond of the triple bond is a dative bond. So two regular covalent and a dative bond to make this large triple bond structure. That's what we have, all right? And that's CO. We've actually done this in theory also. So it's a repetition of that in a way. Then they're saying calculate the bond energy, the triple bond from everything else here. Oh my God. So they've given bond energy of all three and I need to have the whole reaction first. So what I do is, okay, I have C, I have all of this guy, right? So G has to break down. When I break G down, what am I breaking down? I'm breaking down a lot of CH bonds some co bonds and some cc bonds so how many of each of these do g have g has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ch bonds okay and how many co bonds one and one that's two and how many cc bonds one and two so that's what i have so this is for g okay and it makes ethane, CO, and CH4. So that's important. So what's the equation also? Because I'll take the equation down. So the equation is C4, H10O, makes C2H6, and CO, and CH4. I'm writing this just so that I can take the equation down for you and do the question where it is right there. You see? Okay. So that's my equation right on top. Okay and the bonds in G that I'm breaking. So I'll take that part information down, you know, just dragging it down with me so that we have that also. I have all of that. So the way this works is, it's basically delta H of a reaction is basically all the bonds broken. So I'll do the bonds broken in orange. The bonds broken are only of G. So what bonds am I breaking of G? Those are all positive values. So I'm breaking 10 CH bonds. I'm breaking two CO bonds. CO single bonds, right? And uh, two CC bonds. And what am I forming? Well, if I look at CA286, this is C286, you know? C286 has one CC bond and one, two, three, four, five, six CH bonds. And CO has my unknown bond that I want to find X, and that's the only bond there is. And CH4 has four CH bonds, right? Now, here's something interesting before adding the values, because on the left-hand side, I have, and if I just simplify it, 10 CH bonds, two CO single bonds, two CC single bonds. Let's, you can even call them variables, like, you know, but let's say they are variables. Then I am removing one CC bond. I am also minusing, so it's a minus into the whole thing, right? So I'm also removing six CH bonds, also minusing an X and also minusing four CH. Now, why did I do all of this? Because I want to show you that we can simplify all of this stuff. Okay. How do I show that to you? Well, honestly, 
the 10 CH minus the 6 CH minus the 4 CH tells me what? That they, all of these three cancel out. These three completely cancel out. I don't even have to take their value. I could, but it just be a lot of math for no reason. Why bother, right? I'll just take the net change, right? Or you can just add them up and you, I'm, the, I'm the smarter person, so I just cancel them out. And I have two and one being minus. So imagine this is two X minus X or two Y minus Y. I'm left with one here. So what am I really left with? I'm left with two CO single bonds, which are 360. So I'm left with two CO minus uh, plus. So two CC minus one CC is only net one CC. And I have this left because you see, I have canceled these three out. So I have minus X left. So I have literally have minus X left. And if you remember, what was the delta H of the reaction? On top, they had told me the delta H is minus seven. So this is minus seven. So minus seven is equal to two into CO, two into 360 plus what? One CC. What's one CC? 350 minus X. So literally, 360 times 2 is 720. 720 plus 350 is 1070. That's what I have. So here I have 1070 minus 7 is equal to a minus x. So I get minus 1077 is equal to minus x or x is 1077. So the bond energy is 1077. I know it's a lot of working for this, but I was explaining it. When I'm doing it, it would be much faster for me. And that's what I have right here. That's the whole process. All right. I've canceled them out and I've simplified them. I let this be here. Let it sink. And then I'll ask the next question. I mean, I'll see what you need next. Any questions here? Because I can move on. <clears throat> Any questions? Right here, here or lower? Done? <coughs> Sorry. Done? Okay, then next up. Now we move to the next part of the question. It says that when G is heated in a sealed container, an equilibrium of the same reaction happens. So now we have an equilibrium and they want the value for Kc. So how will I write the expression of Kc? Kc is the concentrations of the right hand side which happened to be C286 square brackets into CO square brackets into CH4 square brackets over the left hand side C4H10O. Now these are gases, you could also done KP. And now what they want the units. So understand there are three concentration terms on the top. This is how I do this. And one at the bottom. So they cancel out, I'm left with two, that's concentration square. And each concentration is moles per dm cube. So moles per dm cube square is moles square dm minus six. And if you can't square moles per dm cube, then you have major indices problem and math problems, which at this is A levels, I don't think I wanna solve for. So that's the unit and that's that. Okay, easy part. 
They don't even want you to calculate the value. They just wanted you to find the KC expression. Just checking if you can write KC. That's done for two marks. That's easy. Then it's saying thermal decomposition of G in the presence of iodine affects activation energy. And without I and with I, they have given the activation energy. So state what effect adding I will have on the value for KC. So clearly I is a catalyst, right? So you can say I2 is acting as a catalyst. That's the one mark. And catalysts have no effect on the value. Sorry, my, my pen just ran out of my hand. Value of KC. Therefore, KC remains unchanged or there is no change in KC. That's this part right here. Okay, brilliant. So we got activation energy, we got a catalyst and blah, blah, blah. And then the Boltzmann curve talks about them. So the, they now want to know, this is the spread at the temperature. They want you to do it at a higher temperature. I'll use pink for that or purple at a higher temperature. At a higher temperature, the graph spreads more and extends to further. I just did that. As long as it's further, its highest peak is further away on the x-axis, you know, like that. This part you don't need, like the white part I'm just going to make, you don't need. It's just me showing you that, hey, the highest points x value is greater, the highest points y value is lower because it has spread out to the right hand side. And they're saying sketch on the graph. And here, if I'm just being more, uh, you know, you know, I'll just write the value. It says T plus 100 degrees centigrade. Yeah. That's molecular energies. Now, they are, they're asking half-half questions. That's okay also. They're not asking you to shade the region where the molecules have energy grid and activation. But if they did, these are the green are the molecules. Sorry, green are green. Come on, Bilal, green. So green are the molecules have energy grid and activation before. and Orange and green and all the molecules have energy greater than activation at the higher temperature. But they did not ask that, right? So you start from the same value at zero, okay? You start from the origin and you spread it across there, okay? This was drawn poorly by most students, okay? So please don't do this, okay? The biggest error is they make the hump of this curve higher also. Like they go above like this, say, hey. no, the hump, the height decreases and it goes to the right. Always remember that. Okay. Then the part B. Wait a minute. This is all part A of the question. Whoa, that's 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 strange. Now we got part B of the same molecule. The functional group in G is an oxygen bonded to two other carbon atoms. G, H, and J are structural isomers with the molecular formula C4H10O. Marwa, I'll, I'll scroll back up at the end if you want to draw that, okay? I'm now down now. I'll scroll back at the end of the question. Now here, G, H, and I are all structural isomorphs of the same formula. Now if you notice, this, this guy is saturated. There's no double bonds there. So I'm guessing these guys are also saturated because you cannot be unsaturated and have the same number of hydrogens as you had earlier. So it's also saturated. They're saying H and J are even straight chain molecules. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. And if you have an oxygen atom, you tend to be what kind of, uh, if you have only one oxygen, you're either a hydroxyl functional group or you are a ca carbonyl functional group. Because if you had two oxygens, you could be an acid or an ester, but they're not two oxygens, they're only one oxygen. And generally, carbonyl is not saturated because carbonyl has a CO double bond. And when you look at the carbon-hydrogen ratio, if the ratio looks like a straight chain, most likely this guy is alcohol, meaning these guys are all alcohols. Out of which H and J are straight chain. That means G is branch, first of all. Oh, we already talked about G. Now, G is the one they've given us, so we don't say G is branch. We know H and J are straight chain, right? This, guys, this happened before also in the morning. I'm sorry, my app crashed. 
I'm going to bring it out again. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. It happens. Hmm. Not happy with this. Not happy. It happened. I don't even know where it was. We were doing what? We were doing... <clears throat> Sorry, Marwa, you wanted to see this? Here you go. You see it? Okay, any questions you had? Or you just wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can move down now. Okay. Now it's saying here that, uh, yeah, so after a little uh, crashy crashy, it says here that, uh, what? Yeah. So table shows the boiling points. That's important, you see? That's really important. If you notice G and H, J and H, which are not G, have a higher boiling point. Consistent with my prediction that they must be alcohols because alcohols have hydrogen bonding. They are also getting oxidized. So maybe there are either primary or secondary alcohols, you know? You might even say they're aldehydes, but you can't make an aldehyde with C4H10O. You see, you make a four carbon aldehyde. If you just want to try it out, you see a four carbon aldehyde will have a formula of C4H8O. Okay, that's the key. Now, what kind of isomerism is shown between G and H? Now, remember, H seems to have different functional groups, while G has a different functional group. So when the functional group is different, what kind of specific structural isomerism you have? You have functional group isomerism. And identify the, okay, so now they're both straight chain, right? And they are the same functional group. So they're both straight chain, that means the chain is not different. If the chain is not different, it cannot be a chain isomer. So what kind of isomer could they be if they're not a straight chain? They are not chain isomer and they're still structural, but their functional groups are the same, by the way, because they react the same way. And I'm not telling you the, the functional group was an alcohol, so there must be position isomers. Position isomerism. Positional, sorry. Isomerism. Yeah. Awesome. Those who got that, that's great. Then they want a structure for H and J. Okay. So four carbons, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, let me draw that again. One, two, three, four. And then you have the OH. Or one, two, three, four, and the OH. You might say, well, I want to see the whole structure. So CH3, CH2, 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 OH. And one of them will be butanal, butan one all. And the other one would be butan two all, meaning CH3, CH2, CH, bracket OH, CH3. Yeah, that's what you have. You can make them in any particular, you know, condition. Is there anything else we know about H and J? Yeah, I mean, Okay, one is has a higher melting point. Okay, okay. So the guy with a higher melting point packs better, right? So between these two, who has better packing? This has better packing. Okay, that makes it even more interesting. So this fellow has a higher melting point because it packs better, basically. That's how I know H is that. Because of the uh, boiling point, sorry, not melting point, what am I writing? Same thing though, same idea. The guys who are straight chain, or, and because this is why the OH sticks in the middle, is like a branchy thing. 
while this is a straight chain, not a branchy. And if you remember, straight chain have a higher boiling point. And this is to do with packing of intermolecular forces. More compact shape, more surface area of contact, stronger intermolecular forces, higher boiling point. This will be slightly lower boiling point. All right. We don't have to draw G because G was already what they gave us. This is G. G is not an alcohol. They, they said, this is not your syllabus. This is not your study. They're saying the alcohol you made in H and J are isomers of this. And they are. This is C4, H10O. And these two are also C4, H10O. And that sorts this part of the question. Then we scroll down to the next part of the question. Okay, now we have another guy. Freaking hell, man. K has a molecular form of C3H6. Okay. It is added to 2 for DNPH and a, a, a precipitate forms. That means it's a ketone or aldehyde. Then what does it say? It does react with tolerance. What does that tell you about K? It's a 3-carbon ketone. Uh, sorry, 3-carbon aldehyde. 1, 2, 3. And the O bond there. But they want the displayed formula. Oh my God, all the bonds. See? Three carbon, second carbon, and third carbon has O and H. I think they were running out of marks to give. So they gave, hey, take this fellow and get the thing. Okay. So this, and if they wanted the name for this guy, that would be propanal. They wanted the functional group, it would be called an aldehyde. They didn't want that. They just wanted the structure. Okay. And that wraps up the question. Done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this. Okay, then. Now I've done number three. Okay. No, there is a structural formula. I answer only, oh, I can't answer Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate should know this. He is the richest guy on earth, right? Come on, man. I don't answer fake names. He's like, hey, let me put a fake name because I don't want to know my people in my real name. Okay, then. Fake name, get fake answers, right? Just, oh, I don't understand what you asked. You might not understand the question, Muhammad Ahmed, but I don't understand the question you have about the question. So you have to say it again. Is there any difference between this displayed and structural formula? Structural is absolutely, Andrew, date. There is a big difference between structural and displayed formula. Displayed formula show the bonds. Structural formula are what I had written. So this right here, this fellow, which one? This fellow that I'm highlighting. That's a structural formula. This is a, uh, what do you call it? Skeletal formula. But if they say possible structure, not the word structural formula, that means they are asking you to make displayed, structural, or skeletal, whichever the hell you heart desires, you make it. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we've done three questions and now we went backwards. Now we have 10 marks here and uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, 13 there. I think you'll probably finish this one first. There's also not much time left. So let's do this fast. What do you say? Uh huh. I have seven minutes left. Let's see if I can solve this in seven minutes. Ten marks in seven minutes. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. One second.
Now, period three elements and their compounds show trend in physical properties. On the graph, sketch the melting points of the first five elements. Well, I know group one has a pretty low melting point. Groups two and three get higher up, and silicon is really high up. And then phosphorus gets even lower than sodium. That's my point. So I don't have to make crosses. I can just draw it like that. I don't, I mean, I just made crosses make my life easier. But yeah, so they have a, so here, let me say, this is have a different trend, different trend and goes all the way up and then all the way down for phosphorus. Now this is done in period three. Period three, it's a data that these the first three are metals. Silicon is a, ma a giant molecule and phosphorus is P4, simple molecular structure. Then it's saying a state at room temperature for these compounds. Now, when I look at uh, group, group one chlorides, they are uh, ionically bonded, while phosphorus chloride is covalently bonded. State at room temperature for, you need to know the states also for all the chlorides at room temperature. Now, sodium chloride is a solid, and PCL5 is a low melting point solid. I know in some places it can also be coded as a liquid, okay? But at room temperature, please understand it's a solid. It's a solid, it dissolves, but it's a solid. It's a very low melting point, but it's a solid. And name of the change when they react with water. Now, when NaCl reacts with water, the change is it just dissolves in water. It doesn't react with water, it just dissolves. While PCL5 actually reacts with water. Is a reaction taking place and the reaction produces what produces h3po4 and also hcl and that reaction is called hydrolysis if there's a reaction with water it's called hydrolysis nacl just dissolves it goes from being solid to being aqueous doesn't change anything but its state they're both ions before and they stay ions afterwards but these fellows become different compounds and the pH of NaCl is 7, but this guy is really acidic, so pH 1. It makes HCl and H3PO4, you know? I'd venture out to pH 1 for that matter, okay? Then they're saying tenesine is an unstable man-made element. It is fine below astatine in group 17. The property of this have only been predicted. So suggest an equation for the reaction of sodium, tenacide, and bromine. Now remember, bromine is a stronger oxidizing agent than iodine. So bromine displaces iodine. So bromine will also displace tenacide. Now you can give the ionic equation or the full equation. I like ionic equation. So I'll make TS2 and Br minus. I need to balance them so there are two Br minuses for two Ts minuses. An explanation is simply Br2 is a stronger oxidizing, oxidizing agent than Ts2, not Ts minus. Therefore, it oxidizes oxidize Ts minus to Ts2. That's what you write, okay? And down the group, the strength, oxidizing strength decreases. That's the main purpose of this. So down the group, and this is group 17 theory. Down group 17, the oxidizing power, oxidizing strength, okay, of halogens decreases. Now you could also give me the opposite solution here, that instead of the whole question being oxidation, you can say, well, Ts minus is a strong reducing agent. And you can say it reduces Br2 to Br minus. So either or, by the way, explanation works. Either bromine is a strong oxidizing agent or Ts minus is a strong reducing agent, either or will work here. And the last part of the question is, some scientists predict that it has properties typical of metal like copper. Hmm. So 
if they're saying its properties are like metals like copper, you gotta think about copper when answering these questions. Yeah? Now, if chlorine and bromine have low melting points, what is their solid structure? Remember, if they're simple covalently bonded molecules, the structure is called a simple molecular structure. So these guys have a simple molecular structure. If they ask what kind of bonding, it's covalent bonding. Simple molecular structure. But they want the prediction of the melting point and this. Assume that TS has properties of a metal. There you go, just answer for the metal. What structures metals have? They have a giant metallic lattice. Giant metallic lattice. Okay. Metallic structure or lattice structure and they must have a high boiling point right or a high melting point let's say 400 degrees centigrade 500 degrees centigrade 600 whatever you like that's the that's the anything that's high 800 900 whatever you feel like but copper isn't that high but it's still high enough like 400 500 i've forgotten that but what the exact is but it should be in the hundreds like not 100 200 but like 400 500 600 and that's what it is. All right. Okay. Anyways, that wraps up this question too. Short and easy, quick question. Anna? Any questions about this? No? Done? Are we done? We are done. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, bye bye. Set to go. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Bye, guys.